Hi everyone, it's uh, Matt Thompson here from Glen Guy Sphere 2 cohort uh, here today to discuss my challenge 26 video which is a little video about the timeless landscape and how photographers can show different elements of time through their landscape photography so welcome to this little video uh, what this video will be is me talking uh, showing you some photos from the internet uh, I've been I'm lucky enough to have uh, dad who's a keen photographer and got a, a big portfolio that I can choose from and pick out different elements for. Uh, I'll show you different elements of his photos and how he expresses time and different elements of time. And then I'll also show you examples of my photos where I do the same. So without further ado, let me get started and sharing the screen and displaying these photos. So the first element I'm gonna talk about is uh, journey and how photographers uh, show a journey, take you on a journey through throughout their photography. Um, quite often they do that with a path or um, using leading lines to um, take you on a journey through the photo, let you look into a photo, basically start you out along a path often and uh, let you follow that path through the photo to um, go on a bit of a journey with them and, and show the viewers a journey. So here's a shot of my dad's, a rail bridge, I believe it's in Tasmania and uh, this is one of my photos I did go out to try and take some night photos this night uh, unfortunately the clouds started to roll in as you can see in the photo there but what I did manage to do was take this shot uh, follow the path um, use that as the primary element to take the the viewer on a journey up into the viewing platform and uh, basically then let their imagination run as to what you can see from that viewing platform and and where that path will eventually take you the next element is nostalgia. Now, quite often photographers uh, use post-production for nostalgia. And uh, this is what my, my dad has done here. He's used a sepia tone or a sepia filter on a photo. Uh, this is a swing bridge down at Lawn. Uh, I know for, for dad that this is a place he often visited as a child. Um, so I can understand why he's used um, the sepia tones here to, to bring that old world feel to the photo, make it feel vintage. Uh, here is a shot where I have done the same, excuse the zoom. Um, this is a little area about five minutes away from home. Uh, this, instead of using sepia filters, I started, I've used some, some uh, Lightroom filters, uh, give it a bit of a, a 60s vintage feel. Um, this area is actually now in the middle of a built up area. As you can see, if you look closely, just right on the edge there, there's some, some newer buildings around. This would have been an old building or an old set of buildings in the middle of a paddock somewhere. Um, but uh, as often happens, the urban area is built up a little bit around it. Uh, so I decided to use the filters here just to really emphasize the old building, make this feel like a, a photo that uh, you know was taken uh, 50 odd years ago now and, um, and only recently recovered. The next element I'd like to discuss is capturing motion. So photographers uh, often capture motion through various ways. Sometimes they freeze the motion. The other Another way they often do it is to take longer exposures to display motion. Here, uh, this is what my, my dad has done for this little uh, creek, little waterfall kind of thing here. Um, without, if you didn't take this longer exposure, you just get short, sharp, frozen image. It doesn't kind of take you on the journey, show you the water movement through the image. And this is a much more, uh, I suppose a classic landscape photographer technique for waterfalls. Uh, the next shot is one of mine. This is uh, Hopeton Falls in Victoria. Here I have taken a short exposure just to show you the to try and get the water stopped as the water's falling. However, what I've done as well too in the same framing, I've also taken a longer exposure to actually show that water movement. Again, show a bit of the movement over the waterfall, get that silky smooth water there. And also in the rock pools. Uh, so I'll go back to the previous image. And you can see that if you're looking at the rock pools, the, the movement stopped. You're not seeing much motion there. Then the longer exposure, you get to see a bit more silky smooth flow, a bit more of the water going through the waterfall. Okay, so the next element I'd like to talk about is decay. Now, photographers often like trying to find old elements in 
landscapes, old buildings to take uh, photos of. They actually add an element to your landscape photography. Uh, here, my dad has found an old uh, Chev car uh, sitting in the middle of a paddock um, just outside Geelong. Um, I've been here a couple of times and taken photos with him actually, and it's a nice little spot. Um, he even got some some night photos here. Uh, here he's, you know, got in close, showing the decay, showing the rust, showing a bit of, I think it's moss on the back of the windshield there, showing the grass kind of growing up and growing all around the photo. Uh, this is an image of mine uh, taken around Lake Tyrell. Uh, again, um, fence posts, old buildings are another things we often showed photographers show decay in here you can see a lot of decay around the fence post itself uh, this fence post is in a saltwater lake for a large portion of its life um, and you can see here that's had an impact on the fence post on the wire and shown the decay here uh, so the last element I'd like to discuss and show is creative blur now there's lots of different types of creative blur here my Dad has uh, taken a longer exposure to get some blur in the Ferris wheel. This is a Ferris wheel down in the Geelong waterfront. Uh, he's used this longer exposure to show the motion of the Ferris wheel, also to show off the lights. Now, they um, they light this uh, Ferris wheel quite well when they have it down at Geelong, and you can get some cool effects there. So here's a shot where he's done that. Um, here is you know a more standard shot you'd seen from me, a night photo. Uh, this one's just a plain photo of the Milky Way. However, what I have done is then taken an, a photo that's uh, got a bit of blur, and this is a focal blur, um, just to show some movement, show a bit of uh, dynamics to this photo and to draw the photographer in. Um, almost a picture out of, you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, when they go to warp speed type stuff. Uh, the technique used here was a focal blur. Um, the idea is basically hold, leaving the shutter open, holding as still as possible and slowly moving the focal ring without trying to bump the photo too much and uh, getting this, getting the motion and showing the effects there. So yeah, I think uh, that about it concludes my photo, uh, my video and uh, discussion on the timeless landscape. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.